pretty one, Ulysses. There it is. Hello, booktube. I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. This is probably the last video that I'm ever going to film in this apartment that I should be packing to move out of. I'm moving out in about five days or something. And I'm just starting to pack up my books, but I thought, well, just before I pack up my books, let's do another tag. I like to do a slightly tipsy Sunday evening tag, and this one lends itself to that ambiance fabulously. This I found on Sajid of Books Are My Social Life's channel. And if you haven't checked out Books Are My Social Life, it's just absolutely fantastic. I have said before publicly that I don't watch booktubers who don't share my literary tastes, but I have made a fabulous exception with Sajid. Uh, he reads mostly YA and some literary, so there's a little bit of an overlap, but he's just so entertaining and wonderful to watch. And he recently did this tag. It's called The Bookshelf Scavenger Hunt. He wasn't sure of its origin, and I couldn't, didn't have much luck finding its origin. So if you know the origin, let me know, and I will update my show notes accordingly. However, I'm going to do it. I wasn't tagged in it because I don't have to be. So uh, these are going to be the first couple boxes of books that I pack because I have picked them out. And then as soon as I push the stop button on this video, they're going into boxes, people. I've had kind of a crazy day packing. I was removing stuff piled up behind my computer. You can kind of see my computer here. <laughs> the uh, There was so much stuff back there that the computer monitor fell onto the floor and then all the stuff that was behind it fell onto the floor. Nothing was damaged, but I didn't realize until minutes ago that underneath all that debris was my keyboard. It took me another 20 minutes to find it, so I'm good to go now. So without further ado, let's get started on the bookshelf scavenger. The book the bookshelf scavenger hunt. So these are, there's several challenges here. I found books for almost all of them. There's two that I didn't, and I didn't care enough about to do further searching, but I've got a 98% rate of answers. The first one is find a book with a vehicle on the cover. So I have found a book that I have not yet read, As Good As Gone by Larry Watson. Has anybody read this? I bought it because I'm interested in farm novels. I grew up on a farm and kind of felt like a fish out of water there to mix my metaphors. And in my midlife, I'm interested in kind of reading about why. So this is one that appealed to me by the cover and the synopsis, but I have never read it. Has anybody else out there? The second one is a book with a close-up of a face. There were lots of contenders, but I have gone with this biography. My Heart is My Own, A Life of Mary, Queen of Scots. So there she is in all her glory. Next is a book with a character covering their eyes. So I have two for this, and Neither of them quite fit the grammar of the prompt, but they're close enough for me. One is a book that Matthew Sharapa just gave a glowing review to, and I second that emotion. Harmless Like You by Rowan Hiseo Buchanan. Came out in 2016, I believe. There was one half of it that didn't work, that to me wasn't as strong as the other half, but I haven't been able to stop thinking about this novel since I read it two years ago. And look at that, that's just a fabulous cover. So she's not covering her eyes, but the, uh, the paint is. Similarly, the best book of poetry I've ever read in my life, Night Sky with Exit Wounds by Ocean Vuong. And look at that cover. That's him and his mom and his aunt as they came to America as refugees. Next is a book with a silhouette. And again, lots of books have silhouettes, and this is the first one that I found on my pile. And if the prompt was a book with a silhouette and a price tag, I would have got double points. But anyway, the diver's clothes are empty. The diver's clothes lie empty by Vendela Vida. Never read it, heard good things about it. Picked it up for five bucks here in Tokyo a, couple year, a year or so ago. One of these days. Has anybody read it? Next, a character with their back turned. Surprising number of contenders for this one, but I have gone with a novel I read. It was the last novel I read in 2016, if I'm not mistaken. And this is a Belgian novel translated from the Dutch. Madame Verona comes down the hill. 
and look at that picture. Isn't that fabulous? I really enjoyed it for, in a four star kind of way about a lady that lived at the top of the hill with her husband and then he died and then she was getting infirm and she decided when she could no longer go up the hill to end her life. But it's really quite a powerful book. Oh, by Dmitri Verhulst. Next is a book with a different colored spine to cover. I thought this was a really boring prompt, but I, the Makioka Sisters, the vintage classics edition. Yeah, wonderful novel, boring prompt. Much more interesting was the next one, a book with three characters on the cover, because that's a little difficult. I found lots with four or more and lots with one or two, but three? So how gleeful am I at the one I did find? Are you ready? This is a uh, gay memoir from the UK. <laughs> Visits by Peter Robbins. Look at that. <laughs> I love this prompt. Need a closer look. When I hauled this last fall, I did. I read the, the back cover, which is an excerpt from the novel. If you want to Google this or search for this on my channel, you can find me reading it. I won't take the time now, but I'm looking forward to reading it. Three people on the cover, people. <laughs> Next one, a bird on the cover. And I have chosen a book that Eric Carl Anderson and Camel of What Camel Reads both raved about by an Indo-Canadian novelist, The Parcel by Anosh Irani. And there you can see the bird. It's quite a lovely cover. But I hate the stickers that they put on it. That drives me crazy. So this was a finalist for the Governor General's Award and the Writer's Trust of Canada Award, which is a prize I've never heard of, but I can't wait to finally try it. And that's, that's a lovely cover. Oh, I see that also would have been a great contender for a book whose spine design is completely different from the front cover. Look at that. But too late. I didn't want to double up. The next one is a book with a moon on the cover, and look at that. Jones for Ibarra by Harriet Dewar. A book that I read a couple years ago and really liked, and look at the moon there. This one it needs more attention. Uh, Harriet Dewar published it when she was 65 or 69 or something and published two or three more books before she died. And this was really good. It's about a crazy American couple that, upon learning that the husband has, who's in his 50s or something, middle-aged, has received a fatal diagnosis of some disease or other, decide to go relocate to Mexico and reopen the copper mine or something in Mexico that his grandfather had abandoned 50 years before. And it's about their experience of that in the contact with the, the local people. It's really good. This is maybe the second or third time I've talked about this book on booktube and no mention of Harriet Dewar is complete without showing this author photograph. The next one is a, a book with a sun on the cover, and look at that. This is the Palestinian novel, apparently, Gates to the Sun by Elias Corey. And so sun is in the title and in that fabulous cover illustration. This is a, they call it Persephone, not Persephone. This is Archipelago Books edition, and it's a tome. I have a tentative buddy read, not scheduled, but you know, committed to, with uh, Chris of Chris Bookish Cauldron. Can't wait. Next is a book with an object on the spine, and that's more difficult than you would think. So I have chosen this one, and that is a gravestone. And this is Sleeping Waters by John Trevina, which was published in the early 20th century, 1913. And John Trevina was a pen name of Ernest George Henham. And this is a book about a priest, a Catholic priest, burnt out from ministering to the people of London slums who goes to a remote village in Dartmoor and gets all mixed up with the local people there. And it's just a gorgeous hardcover, really heavy in, in your hand and has good readings. If I remember correctly, good readings on Goodreads, but you know, there's probably only 20 people in the world who have read it. So. I'm going to be the 21st. Anybody want to buddy read it? Ange, this sounds like your kind of book. Check it out. Let me know. The next is a book with a character holding something. I think it means just a book with somebody holding something on the cover. But Walking the Dog by Bernard McClaverty. And I don't even know. Is this stories or... 
uh, yeah, a short story collection by the Irish writer. I've never read him. This is the only book of him I have in my possession. And I can't really tell. What is he holding? What is the person, or that looks like a man's hands, what is the man holding? An upside down jar? I don't know. But anyway, there you go. Has anybody read Bernard McClaverty? I know that he had a new book come out a few months ago, and Dave of Wild Reads liked it, but that's all I know. The next one I have cheated in a major way, but I'm moving and I'm a very busy person, and that's, this is the best I can do. Two books with the same color scheme. And can you guess? Nah. Two from Persephone books. Now, I am about to be kicked off booktube because I have to say that I find the Persephone books color scheme really effing boring and everybody else loves them. I think they're really boring. Whereas I love the, whoa. I love the end papers and stuff. And I know they sometimes publish books where the end papers are on the outside and that seems like it would be a really good idea because the gray and white is it's pretty effing boring, I think. But the books, and is convincing me, are worth a read. So I have Diary of a Provincial Lady by E.M. Delafield, and The Priory by Dorothy Whipple, in which Ange of Beyond the Pages and I will be buddy reading fairly soon. All right, I need some more wine, please wait. Next is a book with an animal on the spine. And once I realized it was on the spine, this was a little tricky too, but it the only one that I found in my library is a book that I can't give shout outs about enough. The Portable Veblen by Elizabeth Mackenzie. Look at that, it's a squirrel. This was one of my favorite reads of 2016. Nominated for a bunch of prizes, didn't win nearly enough. Just wonderful. First I did it on audio, then I bought the ebook, and then I bought the hardcover because I love the book so much. If you're gonna do this, my suggestion is Either do it on audio, there's a couple versions out there, so I'm specifically giving a shout out to the audio book recorded by Lawrence Bouvard, or do an audio text combo, because the audio is just amazing. Because there's actually a squirrel who talks in this novel, and the audio narration was amazing. Next is a book with an ampersand. I have two, one I've read and one I have not. This one that I read shortly after it was published in the 1990s is a gay novel from the UK called Now and Then by William Corlett. I really enjoyed it. I would liked. I bought it. I bought a second copy because I don't know if I kept the first one or it's in a box in Canada, but I wanted to give it another try to see if I still would like it. But it's set back in the past. This, the the schoolboy romance between two boys and then stretching into the present so I can't remember what the past part was 1950s I can't remember but anyway I really loved it at the time and a book I have not read but very much want to read by Rose Tremaine music and silence this one is set this is a historical novel set in the 17th century about a British a young British lutenist who serves the Danish king it's supposed to be really good I have only read Tremaine's book from last year. The title is gone out of my head. Set in Switzerland. With a little bit of a gay plot, but it's not here because this one's before. I really liked it, so I want to read much more by Rose Tremaine, and this is one of the ones that... Robert, of Barter Hordes, this book, because of music, seems like it might be up your alley, so let me know if you're interested in a buddy read. Not anytime soon, but sometime. Next, a character, I assume it means an image of on the cover, which is not necessarily the character except for whatever connections you make, buying into the, all the publisher's public relations gobbledygook, a character wearing a necklace. Well, that was a little hard too. But I found Grand Hotel by Vicky Baum, a German novel from maybe the 1930s, translated by... Basil Crichton, originally published in 1929, and there's the, there's the old girl wearing a necklace, hey? This is set in Weimar, Germany. Uh, it's supposed to be really good, and I have a Buddy Reads, not quite scheduled, but maybe starting as soon as next month with And to Beyond the Pages, and I believe Leah has gate crashed that Buddy Read, which would be delightful if my memory serves. A book you read at least two years ago. 
The Wind Up Bird Chronicle by Haruki Murakami. I read it maybe 10 or 12 years ago, before I ever had even visited Japan. It was my first by Murakami and remains my favorite. I bought this copy at a secondhand store in Tokyo a couple years ago for like $8. And this hardcover first edition is worth more than $100 on the internet. So I got a good deal. I have a softcover edition in my possession as well, but I would like to reread it now that I live in Tokyo, if anybody's interested in a buddy read. Because truth be told, I've kind of soured on Murakami since then, but I wonder if I'll still love this. So it makes me think back to just one reader's rereading book tag. The next one, <laughs> that's really difficult. A book you read from the library. So, I mean, I'm all in favor of libraries, but I'm not interested in libraries for myself personally. I want the physical book. So I couldn't think, when was the last time I read a book from the library? So this is not maybe the most recent, but this is one that stands out. Because I read it in the early 1990s from the public library in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, Canada on the urgent recommendation of my friend who said, you must read this book. And it was the first book I ever read from India and I didn't much care for it. It was kind of a, it was a memoir. It was called Meatless Days by Sarah Suleri. I think if I read it today, now that I've got a lot more of Indian fiction under my belt, I might get a lot more out of it, but didn't really care for it at that time. But it's one of the few books in the last 30 years that I can remember reading from the library. So next is a pronoun in the title. Got lots of those. I'm going to go with Us Conductors by Sean Michaels. This is a Canadian novel, won the Giller Prize, and it's about a musical... A Russian scientist who created the theremin, which was a musical instrument or something. I've heard really good things about it. Not sure it's going to be for me. This might be another one for you and me, Robert of Barter Hordes. What do you think? A book with a verb in the title. I'll Go to Bed at Noon by Gerard Woodward. A book that I discovered through an exchange of page 112 excerpts with Harriet Ann. And this was one of the blind tags that she sent me, and I was really intrigued by it. I think it was my top pick, Gerard Woodward. I believe Bruno expressed an interest in buddy reading this with me, so I might get to this one fairly soon. It sounds interesting, and that's quite a cover, isn't it? A book by a male author. Well, we've got lots of those, but one that has not gotten enough attention on BookTube, even though I've done a, a review of it that's gotten approximately 17 and a half hits is Stephen Florida by Gabe Habash. Came out last year. One of the best books I read last year. Look at that cover. You should check this book out. It's one of the best books about a man and a met one of the best books about a straight male masculinity that I've ever read. Check it out. A book with a shiny font that's not metallic. I'm gonna pull a Memento Mori Adam face here, or I'm gonna do my best to imitate it. Next, a book with a tagline. I think taglines suck. So I was really put off that this novel had a tagline. John Boyne's The Heart's Invisible Furies. Who is Cyril Avery? That is just terrible. Taglines just infantilize the title. So luckily, that was just a mistake the publisher made, and this was my top read of last year. But how humiliating to have a tagline. Ridiculous. All right, we're getting into the really tipsy portion of the tag video. <laughs> um, a book with a symbol, not a heart. This is a Chinese novel that I have not yet read, although I've read two by him. The Four Books by Yan Lianke. And there's all kinds of Chinese symbols there, especially the star. But I believe this is Red Lotus. I didn't research it, but there's all kinds of symbols there. So that's my answer. The next is a book with a three word title. There were many contenders, but this is maybe the first chance I get to tell you about this book. Flushed with Pride, the story of Thomas Crapper, the inventor of the toilet. <laughs> I haven't read it, but I picked it up in Canada a couple book hauls ago, a couple visits ago. I'm sure it's going to be really shitty, but uh, I'll keep you posted. A couple on the cover. I actually couldn't find any queer couples on any of my queer books, which is shameful, but here we go. 
an enigmatic Canadian writer, Helen Weinsweig, I've talked about a few times on this channel, and I've hauled this book, Passing Ceremony, originally published in 1973, reprinted in this lovely A edition from Anansi Press. A book with a pattern on the cover. This is a book I'm currently reading, and that's a pattern, isn't it? Uh, Benchel de Kretzer's The Life to Come. It's quite an interesting cover, and uh, that's a pattern, isn't it? A book you haven't read, how much time do you have? But one that I'm keen to get to, that I recently hauled in a page 112 tag, In Our Mad and Furious City by Guy Gunaratni. Really looking forward to trying this, about uh, British Muslims around the time of that terrorist attack where a bunch of militants hacked a British soldier to death in the middle of London. And the last, an anthology. Well, I'm gonna go with a book that I hauled last autumn, Selected Myanmar Short Stories. So this is a book that I bet you haven't heard of unless you were watching me way back when. Translated by Ma Thanegi, published in 2009. There might be a little bit of a propaganda stuff happening, but it's, I picked it up for like $3 here in Tokyo and it's gorgeously illustrated. Every story has an illustration and uh, I really want to read it. The stories are short, not only short stories, but very short stories, and I, I hope that some of them are good. All right, I have to double check. Did I miss any? Because I thought there was a couple that I couldn't get any answers for. And... No, I guess it was just the one, the shiny font that's not metallic that I missed. I'm gonna tag a few people. If this kind of fun tag appeals to you, please do it. And Beyond the Pages. I've never tagged Laura Fry before, but I bet she has enough books to do this. Dane of Dane Reads would have a ball with this, I think. Six Minutes for Me. Love to see what you come up with. And a new booktuber, new to me booktuber that you should all check out. Knit and Read. Thanks for watching. Now it's time for me to get back to packing, don't you think?